Biggings. My name is Kevin Reddick, and I welcome you to my channel, Conversations from the Hot Box. Many of the individuals connected with us are passionate about discussing real life issues, and I do so from a Christian biblical perspective. For I believe that by sharing our experiences and insights, we can learn from one another and grow in our faith and understanding of God's word. Today's conversation addresses our nation is in crisis. Now jump in the car and let's ride. Now there is strong sense among many American citizens who have been paying attention to the political, financial, environmental, social, legal, and religious, and again, I'm speaking from a Christian perspective, turmoil in this country that we are a nation in crisis. And indeed, what can be considered a crisis to one person is not a crisis to someone else. A crisis is any unstable critical point at which change must occur. They are experiences that you did not expect or prepare for, but yet now must deal with. The Greek word for crisis means deci decision or shifting. It is a turning point that separates and it will always reveal character. Be careful to note, however, that a crisis does not make character. A crisis reveals character. And apart from moments of crisis, character is normally not consciously known. The crisis in America is so serious that we should not put our heads in the sand hoping it will disappear. Now, I understand that some do not possess the mental, emotional, psychological, uh, intellectual, and spiritual abilities to effectively engage in confronting and addressing the turmoil uh, we are facing. But those who are able should stand in the gap for those who are not. I'm saying this because just the revelation of Project 2025 reveals that this nation is in crisis. Now, I don't have time here to effectively address it in detail, but I implore you to please inquire about it. A simple internet search of Project 2025 will provide you with information regarding it. And I have added some links below you can quickly go to for more additional information. However, Project 2025 is a conservative manifesto that if a Republican is elected president in 2024. Crafted by the Heritage Foundation, the 900 plus page book comprehensively addresses every agency that the president can influence with suggestions for agencies that should be eliminated or altered. It is a comprehensive attack on contemporary government organizations and it is also has a component that is actively seeking the most conservative people to populate the new Republican administration. The former president, Donald Trump, goes even further than Project 2025. Coin Project 47, which comes from the, Trump, from the former Trump administration, and it embraces much of Project 2025, but also more aggressively, it addresses the Department of Justice, which will be weaponized to get revenge on President Biden, excuse me, President Biden and others they consider to be enemies. Project 47 would actually establish the next Republican president as a dictator who can hire and fire at will and eliminate agencies at will and as well as really pretty much do what he wants. <laughs> yes, we are a nation in crisis. In fact, uh, thanks to uh, the globalization that we live in today, uh, this new age of social, political, economic, and cultural environments of one nation affects the environment of other nations. There are wars and rumors of wars, including civil war here in America. There's crime that's increasing. There's the working poor and the working homeless, the climate change, uh, the lack of faith in the church, uh, the implosion really of the church in America and fear is exploding because people are 
fragile and vulnerable. Christian theology and the church in America are in crisis. Little has been said about the direction of the theological agenda of the 21st century. Again, globalization, postmodernism, intellectualism, secularization, and other buzz buzzwords are quickly held responsible for this crisis. Christian theology and the church in general appear to have simply become too large, too divided, too abstract, and too worldly to connect God, <coughs> excuse me, and the diversity of the people within this nation. The Christian magazine, Christianity Today, addresses this issue and published these findings. And I quote, while many Americans report that they attend church at least occasionally, that number uh, could be slowly shrink shrinking. Recently, people were asked in an online form, if you used to go to church and don't anymore, why not? And the answers were interesting and insightful. And I included a few of them here. Number one, they said there are too many judgmental people in the church. Number two, they were hurt at church. Number three, the service is too loud. Now, many more former uh, church members reported that they didn't appreciate how loud and showy church services have become. Number four, there were too many false teachings. Some churches have turned aside from their original purpose and turned the sermons into self-help seminars with the word of God only sprinkled in. Five, they stopped attending during the pandemic and just never got back into the habit of attending a physical church. And number six, the church focus on religion over relationship. The church should focus on building a good relationship with God and others, not simply following rules or measuring up to an impossible standard. Number seven, the church became too focused on money. Too much emphasis on money and giving simply isn't healthy. And this becomes even more problematic if church members are treated differently due to their differences in giving. Jesus said that we will always have troubles. Crisis will come. Therefore, it's important to effectively manage how to overcome and survive the circumstances of the crisis. First, we must deal with the flood of emotions that will be uh, coming our way, such as fear and depression and despair and frust frustration and anxiety, anger, worry, hopelessness, just to name a few. The systems of this world's kingdoms are collapsing as the Bible told us they would. The entire American government has been referred to as, and I quote, the great American experiment. When asked by a curious citizen after the adjournment of the Constitutional Convention, what kind of government had been structured by the founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin answered, a republic if you can keep it. As former President Andrew Jackson observed, and I quote, it is well known that there have always been those among us who wish to enlarge the powers of the general government and to overstep the boundaries marked out for it by the Constitution, unquote. And this is certainly true today in America. Not only do the various branches of government seek ways to expand their power by changing the Constitution, there are well-organized and heavily funded organizations actively at work to make serious changes to the Founding Fathers' system. Can America lose her freedom? An examination of the history of civilization reveals that nations have risen and they have fallen. Governments have been formed and they have been dissolved. People have become free and they are falling into slavery again. So yes, America can lose its freedom.
The National Center for Constitutional Studies declared that, and I quote, 19 of the world's 21 significant civilizations disappeared from the face of the earth, not from assault from outside forces, but from deterioration within the society. Many would contend that America has departed from the intentions of its founders in a number of significant ways. The singer listed several departures from the Constitution framers' original intent that would end the great experiment. And the list included, one, increasing centralization of authority in the national government. Two, the erosion of principle of separation of powers. Three, the departure of basic values to which the founders subscribed. Four, the destruction of the founder's monetary system based on a money with intrinsic value. Now I want to note that the United States uh, uh, current uh, dollar bill is no longer uh, uh, has any intrinsic value of its own. In other words, the U.S. dollar is no longer backed by gold and therefore it has no real value. Listening as number five is the loss of citizens' understanding of constitutional principles and the philosophy underlying them. And this is a big one here in America. With the help of the current Supreme Court and through Project 2025, four of the five things listed are now under attack. The possible end of the great American experience is the crisis and it has been in development for several decades now. Former President John F. Kennedy, before his untimely assassination, expressed the viewpoint of Western civilization when he stated, and I quote, I speak today in an hour of national pearl and of national opportunity. Before my term has ended, we shall have to test anew whether a nation organized and governed such as, our, such as ours can endure. The outcome is by no means certain. The tide of events have been running out and time has not been our friend. As citizens of the kingdom of God, our responsibility is to be the avenue through which the power of our king can legally be released on earth to intercede in the affairs of men. Now we do this through fasting, praying, declaring, decreeing, and serving. In this particular crisis we are facing, fasting, praying, and voting is a must. As Christians, we are facing an additional crisis. It is a crisis of conviction. This crisis is to reveal if you are stuck in the quicksand of religious denial. To me, it has always been difficult to understand evangelical Christians who insist upon living in the crisis as if there is no crisis at all. They preach, teach, dance, sing, and shout on Sunday, enjoying their religious experience and being at ease while the nation burns. When the United States came under a terrorist attack on 9-11, Every able-bodied citizen felt compelled to take action, to do something. When the towers were hit by planes turned into missiles, as a New Yorker, I felt that no one had any right to rest till all that could be done to save and help had been done. Now, this is the accepted code by which we should live. A critical emergency for some becomes an emergency for all. As long as the crisis rages, no one should talk of normal times. No times are normal while helpless people lie in the path of destruction. In times of extraordinary crisis, ordinary measures will not suffice. Understanding this, Christians are in a position to be used of God by standing in the gap and confronting the crisis. We dare not settle down to try to live as if things were normal. Nothing is normal at this time in the world, not just America. Egypt is mentioned in the Bible almost 700 times, 
uh, 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 in the Hebrew text and then 25 times in the New Testament, making it the most frequently mentioned place outside of Canaan. Egypt was a significant imperial power in ancient Africa during biblical times, and its culture and power had a significant impact on Israel and Judah. What caused Egypt to become a nation in crisis was fear. In the book of Exodus chapter 1, verses 7 through 12, it reads, But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he, and he said to his people, look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply, and it happen in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us. And so go up and out of the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to inflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. The fear is expressed in the statement the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. It declares that Israel was more numerous and powerful than policies for Egyptian security to tolerate. They feared the consequences of a war in which Israel might side with their enemies. This is an understandable threat since Egypt was plagued at that time with wars in both the West and the South. That same type of fear is one of the driving forces in America today. It is the fear of black and brown people outnumbering whites in America. Throughout the Bible, we see that times of national crisis were set times for prophetic voice. Whenever God has a set time to release his purpose on earth, he will raise up a prophetic voice God has an audience to whom he wishes to direct his thoughts. And this may be an individual, a church, or a nation. A situation has arisen with the children of Israel that required divine action. His people were in trouble. There was a military threat against the legacy. The people were living in religious compromise and social upheaval. So during that time, Rather than figuring out a battle plan against the king or putting together a delegation to go up and negotiate a peace treaty, the Israelites sought the prophetess Deborah to heal the word of the Lord. The Israelites were in a serious crisis. Death was literally knocking on the door in the form of a massive army. And rather than rely on their own knowledge and understanding and strength, they turned to God for a solution through a prophetic word. When I mentioned uh, fasting earlier, I was referring to fasting that is performed by the whole nation or a significant segment of that nation, mainly Christians within this nation. <laughs> Usually uh, at a time of perceived crisis on a national scale, this becomes important this becomes valuable. In the Old Testament, national fasts were called during times of war, uh, when, when facing widespread pestilence, uh, when security of the Jews was threatened in the Persian Empire, and when uh, confronted by the threat of imminent divine judgment, the nation would fast and pray. We need to fast to increase awareness of spiritual warfare and to release God's power to accomplish victory in power encounters in which we don't have the power to obtain those victories. 
Other results may be realized through fasting include increased spiritual authority, uh, receiving divine affirmation of ministry, obtaining new direction for ministry, gaining new insights during biblical study that become foundational truths for ministry, uh, an enhanced desire to pray, affirmation through sense of destiny experiences, new power for spiritual warfare, guidance and liberty for workers in ministry, victory over satanic strongholds, assurance of divine protection, an increased sense of God's presence, and a breaking of attitudes and policies hindering progress in a new ministry, and times when prayer becomes enhanced as a means of effectively wrestling with issues. You know, as I close, I, I find it interesting that the words for crisis in Japanese and Chinese are the same as the word opportunity. What brings them into commonality is the seemingly defeat inherited in every crisis which holds the key to an unanticipated victory. In other words, out of crisis, opportunity can be birthed. And I leave you with these scriptures to declare, to pray, and build your faith upon as we endure, overcome, and confront this nation in crisis. What say you? I hope you enjoyed the ride today. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please click on the button above labeled Prayer of Salvation. Otherwise, thank you for spending some of your time with me. Please take a second to like this post, share it with family and friends, subscribe to this channel. And as always, peace and blessings to you and your household.